Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of medical costs uh, for a number of different patients and some information about each patient. And we're going to try to predict the cost that a given patient will incur based on uh, their region, whether or not they're a smoker, how many children they have, um, their BMI, their sex, and their age. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, I, I'm going to try to make this a quick one. Uh, we have NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. Standard scalar. I, I have a, a couple different scalars here, um, and you'll see why. Uh, but that's from sklearn. And then the train test split function also from sklearn. And then we have a number of different linear regression models. I'm not doing any ensemble methods today, just linear regression, uh, ridge regression, lasso regression, elastic net regression, uh, which is just a combination of ridge and lasso. And then um, the last three are the same as these ones, but with uh, CV, cross-validation, and hyperparameter op optimization built into the models. So I'm going to go ahead and import those, and then we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. I'm going to go get the file path over here, insurance.csv, copy the file path, paste it in, and then take a look. So we have seven columns. Uh, let's just get a little bit of information about the data set. Uh, looks like there's no missing values and only three object columns. Uh, so we may have our work cut out for us. Uh, let's let's uh, start pre-processing. So I just want to confirm that their number of missing values is zero. So uh, we can take this is an A matrix, which is just has a true value if there's a missing value in that location. So we can sum over the rows to give the number of missing values in each column, and then again uh, over the columns to get number in uh, the whole data set. So print total missing values, zero. OK. Uh, now let's also print out the number of uh, non-numeric columns in the data set. Now this is a small data set, so I can just look at it and know, but I just want to print it. So for that, we can get data.selectDtypes object. So this right here, if I just run that a little bit, uh, you can see it shows all the columns that have a data type of object. So if I do dot columns, we'll just get a list of the column names, and we can do the length of the column list to give us the number of non-numeric columns. Okay, and with that information, uh, one more bit of information I'd like is to know uh, what kind of data is in each non-numeric column. So I'm going to create a dictionary. I'm just going to map a column name to a list of the unique values in that column. So I'll be able to see side by side the column name and the unique values in the in the column, but that's for every column in not col uh, not data dot columns, but data dot select d types object dot columns. So just the non numeric columns, and so we can see uh, all the categorical columns and the kinds of values that are lo are uh, held inside each column. And so now uh, that lets me know what kind of encoding I need. Um, I'd also like to point out that this children variable is actually a categorical feature, even though it's in numerical form. I'm going to want to one-hot encode the children uh, column as well. Uh, in fact, how about right up here? Um, yeah, I'll do it right here. Or no, right here. I will make the children column, so it's, it's called children, equal to the same the same column, uh, but as type string. So now we have four non-numeric columns, and we can see the values in children as well. All right. Uh, now what I'd like to do is create the functions that I need for uh, encoding. So I'm going to make a binary encode function. Uh, binary encoding is just setting one of the values. Uh, it only works on on columns with two unique values. So we set one of the values to 1 and the other to 0. Uh, and so we can do that for sex and for smoker. And then for the other ones, since there's more than two values and they're uh, nominal, we can, we can use one hot encoding for children and region. So I will define two functions, one binary encode, which will take in a data frame, a column we'd like to encode, and a positive value, uh, the value in the column that we'd like to have uh, 1. Uh, we'd like to encode as 1, and the other one will be encoded as 0. So I'm going to start by creating a copy of our data frame. And then all this does is takes the column uh, that we specify, 
and applies a lambda function to it uh, that sends x to 1 if x is the positive value and otherwise sends x to 0. So uh, this is, you can see we specify which one we want is 1 and then every, all the other one just goes to 0. Then return df. All right, and then we need a one hot encode uh, function. Takes in a data frame, a column, and a prefix for the column, uh, for the for the dummy columns. For this, we'll again create a copy of our data frame, and then create a dummies a data frame using pandas .get dummies for df sub column. So this function, uh, very simple, just takes in here. I'll, I'll use children. Uh, you can see, actually it's a little confusing, I'll use region. Uh, it takes each uh, unique value in region and constructs a new column out of it. And before, you can see the regions for the uh, first four examples were southwest, southeast, southeast, northwest. So over here, we have a 1 uh, for each corresponding value. Southwest, southeast, southeast, northwest. Uh, so what we'll do with that is um, we'll get these dummies uh, and we can also include a prefix. Uh, so this is region. That will just append this little prefix to the beginning of each column so that we know where the dummy columns came from. So here I'm going to use the prefix that we specify on the column we, we specify. Uh, then we're going to concatenate using pandas.concat the original df and the new dummies and side by side access one. When we're done we're just going to drop the original column from which we created the dummies and then we'll return df. Okay that's all we need. Uh, we could also create an ordinal encoding function if we needed it. Uh, oh you know it's interesting you could consider this as an ordinal column and use ordinal encoding but because it's there's only uh, six categories um, I'm going to consider this as nominal. Although there is definitely an order, you could ordinal encode this. Uh, it, I think I'm going to keep it on as a one hot, one hot encoded. Okay, but this is it's sort of preference. I mean, it's it's about what works. So let's uh, now create a preprocess inputs function. So this is I, I just want to make a function that's going to take all of our preprocessing and apply it in one go. So it's going to take in a data frame called df and then we're going to specify a scalar to use and a train size. So this is going to do all the work for us in one go. First we'll binary encode the sex and smoker columns. So all we have to do is df equals df no df equals binary encode df sex uh, male We'll encode male to be 1 and female to be 0. Uh, that's the typical convention. And then binary encode. Uh, we're just doing the same thing to the smoker column now. And the positive value for smoker is yes. We could use no, but it makes more sense to use yes. And then uh, we're going to one hot encode the uh, region, uh, children, and region columns. So for that, we just say df equals one hot encode df uh, children, and we can give it a prefix. How about ch? And again, we'll one hot encode df on the region column and reg. Yeah, re. How about? All right. After that, we're going to want to split our data. Uh, so split df into x and y. So y is what we're trying to predict. So it's going to be just the column we're predicting in this case is charges. So charges, we'll make a copy of it. And x is going to be everything except charges. So all the other columns. We're dropping charges, making a copy. Um, and then we're going to scale x with the, uh, the given scalar. So we're going to pass in the scalar. Uh, that's why I imported uh, like three different scalars at the top because I want to pass in different scalars and see their effects. So uh, 
x equals scalar, that's the one we were passing in, dot fit transform x. And this will return a NumPy array, so I want to keep it as a data frame. So I'm going to uh, re convert it into a data frame and specify the column names as the old column names. Okay, then uh, we'll split into train and test set. And for this, I'm going to use sklearn's train test split function. So we're going to get x train, x test, y train, y test equals train test split x, y. Train size here is given by the train size we specify in the parameters. And then we'll include a random state. Uh, we can just make this one, two, three. Uh, this is anything just so that we can reproduce the results. And then we'll return df. Okay. Uh, so now all we have to do, we can look at our data. Looks like this. Um, we can call preprocess inputs on data. Uh, we have to pass in a scalar, so we can give it a standard scalar. Uh, we can give it a uh, train size also, 70%. Yeah, I initialized it to 70%, but uh, I'll just specify that anyway. And then this returns four values train, x test, y train, y test. Okay. Uh, too many values to unpack. Oh, I should not return df, sorry. I have to return x train, x test, y train, y test. Okay, there we go. All right, so, you know, why don't I, I make a copy of it at the beginning so I'm not accidentally modifying it in place? It's just good practice. Um, okay, so let's start training. All right, so uh, I'm gonna create a bunch of models I'm going to make a list of them. Actually, it'll be a dictionary. I'm going to map the model name to a model, uh, an actual instance of the model. I'm just going to copy and paste this in because I don't want to take too long doing this. Um, I have our ordinary least squares model, which is just regular linear regression. Then we have ridge regression, or L2, regularization. Lasso regression, which has L1 regularization. Elastic net, which just has a combination of L2 and L1. Then we have the same models, but with uh, cross-validation and hyperparameter optimization built in. Uh, and then for each model, uh, so for model in models dot, dot values, so we're just going to be accessing the values of the dictionary, uh, we're going to train the model, fit the model on x train, uh, y train. Okay, so now we have, uh, I believe that's seven different trained models. And now I want to print out the r squared values for each one. So model r squared scores. Uh, I'll just put some dashes here and make it look nice. Put a few more. Yeah. And then um, for name model in models.items. So if you get the items function from a dictionary, it'll give you uh, the key value pairs as tuples. So then you can iterate uh, through them two at a time. Print name. Uh, comma model sco model dot score so we're going to evaluate the model on x test y test all right and we can see uh, it looks like our l1 cv model did the best uh, 76 uh, 0.76 r squared uh, pretty good the other ones are, are trailing slightly behind it the only one that seems to be really doing really poorly is the el elastic net cv model I'm not sure why uh, that is so low, 0.139 compared to the others. All right, but um, so that that about sums it up. But there's one thing I want to try before that. I want to try using a different scaling method. So we can try it with a min-max scalar, uh, which we can just run this again, and it looks like maybe it looks about the same, but this went down even more. So not nothing crazy. No no performance boost. Last one we can try, I'm going to try, is a robust scaler, which is better at dealing with outliers in the data. And this one, uh, also not as good. Not as good. So standard scaler seem to be the best one. Uh, yeah, we're still getting set 0.76. 
on the L1 CV model. Uh, but yeah, I got, that'll sum up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.